first day of Black History Month and it's a huge snowstorm. We always come in with a bang and go out with a Check out this snowstorm. It's so beautiful out here. Cold, but definitely beautiful. Today is the first day of Black History Month. I love Black History Month for many reasons, but I'm really excited about it because I wanted to highlight the Black community's contribution to fashion specifically. Like, I feel like the black community, the just black people, we are an amazing people and it's no secret that we make ish hot, you know what I'm saying? But I just wanted to take this time and just spread awareness through doing some research on my own, um, just spread this knowledge and let you guys know that our dopeness goes back for many years and centuries and I just want to help put and spread the word out there and just let people know that uh, we've been fly since the beginning of time and that um, we've really been in fashion and, and we're not going out of style. So let's get started. I'm really excited to share some of this information with you all. Did you know the black community has a deep rooted history with denim? It starts all the way back to the 1700s in West Africa with the indigenous plant of indigo, which traveled with the enslaved to the Americas. And indigo was actually the most profitable plant in the Americas before cotton and tobacco and sugarcane at the time. Indigo was so precious. It was actually used as currency at one point. And as you guys know, indigo is used to make denim. You hear the phrase indigo jeans. Well, that's where that come from. That fabric was seen as negro cloth or slave cloth because denim was used as uh, a contrast between the slave owners and the enslaved while they're working the fields because the slave owners will wear their suits and sunday best while the enslaved was have to wear whatever they gave them denim was used because of its durability is very strong and has a long lifespan and it can withstand tears denim is typically made out of hemp linen and cotton Denim was often seen as a lower tier black person's clothing. It was inappropriate and unacceptable for anyone else to wear it. It's funny how things change because that's all everyone wears. So, you know, like I said, we make things hot, right? Um, <laughs> let's talk about the 1920s and 30s, starting with the famous Josephine Baker. I love her. She's one of my fashion icons and idols. She is amazing and she's still influencing fashion till this day. She was a lady who didn't believe less is more. More is more and more is what's needed and more is the best. So I loved it from her accessories, from her hair to her fashion choices. She was incredible and just one of a kind. She's still influencing trends today. Prada based their entire collection off of her. She was their inspiration. They made a printed banana skirt. They made um, their show, the hairstyle based off her hairstyle. And just, she is just a force and she's still making waves today. Let's talk about the 1930s. The 1930s is known as the Zoot Suit era. The Zoot Suit started in the African-American comedy scene, but didn't gain huge popularity until the 1940s when jazz musicians like Cab Calloway, Louis Armstrong, Nat King Cole, and Dizzy Gillespie was wearing them. That's when it really like roared and exploded and everybody was wearing Zoot Suits. Zoot suits became so popular, they were being referenced in cartoons and also even Spike Lee movie, uh, Michael Max, you can see him wearing it as well. It's such an iconic suit shape that it still influences fashion today. A zoot suit is a high-waisted male trouser that's wide leg that is pegged and cuffed and then it's paired with a long overcoat with wide lapels and broad shoulders. It's such an iconic suit silhouette, it's still referenced to today. Shout out to the jazz musicians because y'all made that silhouette and made it hot. Let's talk about the 1960s. Did you guys know that denim was actually worn 
um, by like the freedom fighters and civil rights activists as they were going around to recruit people to fight for the cause. SCLC, which is a Southern Christian Leadership Conference, and I believe its first president was Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. They believe in protesting and spreading awareness wearing their Sunday's best. Whereas there was a younger political activist who wanted to wear denim because denim blurred the economic lines. They wore denim to go recruit people to join the movement because they would oftentimes would go to lower income communities when they were knocking on the door if they were in their Sunday best that could intimidate or create some type of divide and um, wouldn't be as successful joining the cause. Denim was used to combat sexism. For some reason, black women are hypersexualized and um, denim was used to actually protect them, physically protect them. They were being attacked by water hoses, having dogs sicked on them, and they had to be able to move and run and be agile to get in, and evade all those things. And just wearing their Sunday best and those skirts and those heels and those blouses was not cutting it. They needed something that provided agility and it protected them from the racism and harassment that, that, we, that they were facing. Moving right along to the 1970s. The 1970s is synonymous with big hair, big afros, and black power. The black beret, the black turtleneck, black pants was the uniform created by Huey P. Newton and Bobby Seale. This uniform has made an impact on fashion till this day. The militant fashion and style is a focal point in streetwear, whether it's a graphic t-shirt depicting a political message or whether if it's just the remnants of the Black Panther silhouette, it's still influencing fashion to the day. For example, take Beyonce's Super Bowl 50 halftime performance paying homage to the Black Lives Matter movement, or just, you'll see a little glimpse of it throughout fashion, especially like checking out magazines, you'll see a reference. It's such an iconic, like silhouette and also former black panther member and political activist angela davis is an embodiment of that all she represented natural beauty and just the black power movement because at that time and even still to today we're struggling and fighting against the like mainstream standards of white beauty. Angela Davis was just a message and as a reminder that black is beautiful. Love the skin you're in, love the color of your skin, love the texture of your hair. Black is beautiful. Now we get into the 1980s, the birth era of hip hop and streetwear. Ah, so cool. Stemming from the 1970s Black Panther uniform, the all black everything, but now in the 80s they had to make it a little more fresh and just current. Think about Rakim, the Sugar Hill Gang, and Run DMC. They wore what? All black as well, but they made it more fresh and more current. They made it maybe with a black bomber jacket, the gold dookie chain. They wore with the black jeans and now some sneakers. Run DMC was the first rap group or first rap duo, first rap anything to get a million dollar sneaker endorsement. That's freaking major because they made the song My Adidas and it sold millions worldwide. Towards the end of 1980s to early 1990s, brands like Cross Colors and FUBU emerged and they were making tons of money, catering specifically to the hip hop community. Eventually, other mainstream brands caught on and started offering, you know, urban apparel lines too, like specifically Tommy Hilfiger is one of the first brands that decided to offer, you know, urban apparel. It just became more mainstream which made a big impact on streetwear. Take for example, Dapper Dan. He's the one that gives those brands like Gucci and Louis Vuitton street credibility and the street desirability. Because at the time they were only making like accessories. They didn't venture into the apparel market. Dapper Dan would go buy a bunch of their products, cut them up, reconstruct them into actual garments from leather jackets to pants, to dresses, to whatever it is, you name it, he did it. And then those brands got the bright idea like, huh, eventually like decades later, like we should start offering apparel. And you guys, I'm sure you heard about this Gucci offer Dapper Dan and a permanent spot on the company to have his own line. So black people has a huge contribution to fashion, a huge connection to denim. It's a huge contribution to this industry period. Like we're the number one grossing consumer. We have a lot of buying power and a lot of influence and we make things hot. So I hope you're able to take something away from this video and know that we have a lot to offer as a people, as a, as a community, and we just have style and never forget that. And thank you for watching. If you haven't, please like and subscribe. And if you have any other facts you think I should include, maybe I should make a part two video, please add it in the comments below. And thank you for watching. Bye.